by the end of this video, we're going to be adding sound effects to our game like this. Or this. Or this. Or whatever you want. And also adding in a volume slider. Cool, let's check it out. So first off, the plan is we're going to have a library script and a manager script. In our library, we'll be able to store lists for our sounds. So these examples, I'm going to add in a player hit sound effect, gem sound effect, and bounce sound effect. Then our manager is going to be able to grab from our pool of many sound effects in our library and get a random sound. So each time we do an action, it doesn't sound the same and get repetitive. And we're also going to add a slider to be able to set our volume. So in our hierarchy, let's create a new object and we'll name this sound effect manager. Because this is dealing with audio, we're going to want to click add component and add a audio source. Then we'll click add component again, go new script. And first of all, let's add our sound effect library. In our library, I'm going to add a private dictionary. And for our key, we're going to have a string and the value is going to be a list of audio clips. And I'm going to call this our sound dictionary. A dictionary is the most efficient way of storing things that you want to be able to grab with a certain key. In our library, we're going to use a string as our key and make this match the name of what we want our sound effects to be. For example, gem, player hit, or bounce. Now, dictionaries are very good, but they can't be accessed in Unity's inspector. So what we're going to do is make a new class that can be viewed in the inspector and use this to populate our dictionary. So we're going to go public struct sound effect group. In here, we're going to place our public string name, which is going to be the key for our dictionary, and then a public list of audio clips called audio clips. Now above sound effect group, type some square brackets and then go system.serializable. This makes it so we can view it in the inspector. So now back at the top, we're going to go square brackets, serialize field, private, sound effect group, square brackets again to make this an array and call this sound effect groups. So if I jump back to Unity, you can see we have these sound effect groups that if I open, I can add a new element where we can add a name and our list of audio clips. We'll populate these later. For now, back in our script, we're going to want to use the awake function and use this to initialize our dictionary. We haven't written this function yet, but if you hover over and click show potential fixes, you can just click generate method and it'll add in this method for us. So to initialize our dictionary, we want to go sound dictionary equals new dictionary of string and then list of audio clips. And then we'll go for each sound effect group, sound effect group in our sound effect groups. We want to say sound dictionary square brackets sound effect group and we want the name to use as our key and then we'll set this to equal our sound effect group dot audio clips so we grab the list of audio clips and stick it in our dictionary under the key of our name and we don't want this start or update so we can delete those and we're going to want a public audio clip get random clip and inside the parameters we're going to pass string name first we need to check if it exists in our library so let's say if sound dictionary dot contains key name and we're going to go list audio clip and grab our audio clips from our sound dictionary and go set square brackets and pass in the name so now we want to check and make sure if our audio clips dot count is greater than zero then we're going to return an audio clip with the index being random dot range and passing in zero comma our audio clips dot count so even if you only have one audio clip in this list this will still work as well as having 50 audio clips for it to choose from. Random has a red squiggle underneath it, so just go show print potential fixes and use unity engine.random. Now we need to return something from all our paths. So at the end, if this has not returned and we don't have any audio clips, you can return null outside of here. Cool, now that's all done, let's go back to Unity and on our sound effect manager under sound effect library, let's open up sound effect groups and you can see we've got this list is empty. So I'm going to click the plus and add three different elements here. Since I've got three different groups of sound effects I want to add in. The first one is going to be our gem sound effects. So when we pick up a gem and for my sound effects, I'm using Kenny Games assets again. It's got lots of free sound effects on here, but I'm using these sci-fi sounds. So in my assets, I'm going to right click and go create folder, call this sound. Inside here, I'm going to create another folder and call this gem. And then go inside this and for our gems i'm going to use power up two seven eight and nine and drag these into our folder if you notice on this file type you can see it's type ogg or og this is the file type commonly used with sound effects now on our sound effect manager a little tip so we can keep this sound effect manager open while selecting our sounds is right click in the inspector and clicking properties this brings us a little pop out of our sound effect manager so now i can select other items and still have my sound effect manager here for me to put stuff into so i'm going to select all of my gems sound effect clips and then drag them over on top of audio clips now these are all inside we're going to want to write our next script which is our manager it's going to have the functions for us to call to play these sound effects so 
it on our sound effect manager. Let's go add component, new script, and call it sound effect manager. Double click on this to open it up. And to make this callable from any of our scripts, we're gonna go private static sound effect manager and create an instance of this script. To make sure we only have one of these instances at a time, we're gonna go awake and say if instance equals null, instance equals this. And so this isn't destroyed if you change scenes or anything like that. We'll say don't destroy on load and pass in game object. We want to say else if there is already an existing instance of this, destroy this game object. Cool. Next, we're going to want a private audio source called audio source, a private sound effect library called sound effect library. And for changing the volume, we're going to get a serialized field, private slider, and I'll call this SFX slider. Hover over slider and add in using Unity UI. Now we need to get our audio source off of our game object. So in our awake, just below instance equals this, we'll go audio source equals get component audio source, which is going to grab the audio source off of this game object. And we'll do the same thing for sound effect library. So sound effect library equals get component sound effect library, which is going to grab our script for us that we just wrote and added to this sound effect manager. Cool. So first let's add a public static void play. And in the parameters, add a string called sound name. In here, we're going to pass in a name of the sound effect we want to play. And we're going to want to go audio clip, audio clip equals sound effect library dot get random clip. And we'll pass in our sound name. Oh, this has a red underline because both our audio source and sound effect library need to have static in the beginning. So just go up to the top and add these here. So now we've got our random audio clip from our library. We'll double check and say if our audio clip is not null, then we tell our audio source to play one shot and we'll pass in our audio clip. Using play one shot is good for our sound effects because as it says, it plays our sound effect once. Now we can write the code for adjusting our volume. So we can get rid of update and instead go public static void set volume and pass in a float of our volume. And all we do here is say audio source dot volume equals volume. Now we're going to want this to be called whenever our slider value is changed. So let's go public static void on value changed and then call set volume and pass in our SFX slider dot value. Again, this needs to be static since our whole instance is a static one. And finally, to get this to actually be called whenever our value is changed in our slider, what we can do is say SFX slider dot on value changed dot add listener. And in the brackets, we'll type delegate curly brackets and inside the curly brackets go on value changed. Now we're gonna want a semicolon after on value changed brackets and then at the very end. And I made a mistake just now. This slider variable shouldn't be static. And this has a red underline because this function shouldn't be static. So sorry about that. Cool. So now if we go back to Unity on our sound effect manager, when you scroll down, you can see we have a slot for our slider. I have a canvas set up already called UI where I'm going to right click and go UI slider and call this my SFX volume slider. I'm just going to double the scale on this. If I double click on my UI in the hierarchy, you can see your canvas. Click on my SFX volume slider, click the move tool and drag it to my top corner. And then real quick, I'm just going to make my fill area the same purple as my items. And if you scroll down, set your default value to be one. So our volume is at max. And so this doesn't move with our keyboard on navigation, we'll set this to none. Cool. So now if you click sound effect manager and drag in your slider, we'll be all set up. So right now we've got our gem sound effects. So I have a prefab for my gems. If I go here and go to my gem script, we currently have a function where I pick up my gem and it gets destroyed. Before it gets destroyed, we'll have it play a sound effect. To do this, all we have to do is go sound effect manager dot play and pass in gem. And as easy as that, that is how you get sound effects working from anywhere in your game. We know to pass in gem because in Unity on our sound effect library, the name is gem. So you need to make sure your casing and everything is the same as the string. To quickly show you an example of another one in another element, I'm going to add in player, hit, add a new folder, drag in my sound effects, go to sound effect manager. I'm going to click the lock at the top here and select all my sound effects and drag them into the audio clips list. I open this up. All my sound effects are here. I'm going to unlock this, click on my player, go to my player health script. And in here, when I take damage, I'm going to go sound effect manager dot play and pass in player hit. And that's so easy. So for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's press play. And when we pick up a gem, <laughs> it made a sound. Let's get hit by this enemy. Oh, it didn't make a sound. Let's find out why. Let's go to our sound effect manager. Oh, I said play hit instead of player hit. I'm typing faster than I'm thinking. Or I'm thinking faster than I'm typing. Anyway, let's test it again. Now we can pick up an item. We get our sound effect. Well, let's get hit by this enemy. Nice. So now if we test our sound effect volume. So max volume. And quiet. Half volume. 
and max volume. Very cool. With this method, you can add any types of sound effects that you like. I'm going to add one more for when I bounce on our bounce trap. So you can watch me add this in super fast mode. With my bounce, I'm only adding two sound effects, phase jump one and two. And for our bounce trap, if our trap has no damage, it's a bounce trap. So we can go sound effect manager, play, bounce. Cool, so with that in, I can now have fun with a little bounce trap. Cool, so now you can go ahead and have some fun adding in your own sound effects. And in the next video, we're going to be adding background music. As always, you can find the code for this on my Patreon, as well as all other videos I've ever made for only £5. It's a good deal. Check it out. Bye.